As they met inside his soul, Megami told Yuji that he's done enough. Megami wanted to live in a world where his sister Sumiki wouldn't have to needlessly suffer. At the very least, he wanted to protect their fragile life as much as possible. He thought about home-cooked meals, the sun hitting their hanging laundry, even seeing her be in love with someone like Yuji. That's what Megami would have considered true happiness. But now, that dream would never come true. And he was done. Yuji lowered his eyes. When his grandpa was first diagnosed with lung cancer, he turned down a rough treatment with strong side effects. Maybe he believed his body would be strong enough without it. Sometimes, Yuji would hear about ending his suffering early. But that didn't seem right. It felt like it was someone else's choice to make. Yuji has always been stronger than most. So he's also able to endure more than most. He could look at another person's situation and recognize that it must suck for them, but he himself was fine. Ever since he came to Jujutsu High, he's had awful thoughts. And when he thinks about that being the case forever, he's able to empathize with his grandpa, or anyone dealing with a helpless situation for that matter. Which was why he couldn't tell Megami to continue living. This is a level of maturity that isn't usually seen from shonen protagonists. We're more used to seeing characters take the whole never give up thing to psychotic levels. To be fair, that's the entire final arc of My Hero Academia. Gege is in his bag right now. This is just serious artistry at work. I am really impressed by the writing for Yuji lately. Two of Sukuna's hands were brought together. He activated Hollow Wicker Basket. We are still in Yuji's domain after all. That's why it's snowing and all that. The King of Curses marched past a flock of geese. The two sorcerers approached one another, ready to resume their grudge match. Sakuna would have preferred to have used Gojo's method of resetting a burnt-out technique in a domain. But the danger posed by the after-effects of Unlimited Void was just too great. Unlike a domain where a mental image is actualized, techniques like Hollow Wicker Basket or a Simple Domain don't require much cursed energy. They're more or less just a way for sorcerers to buy time against the sure hit aspect of a domain. Eventually, they will certainly be overpowered. But Sakuna can cheat on the output front by maintaining the hand sign even after activation. So, he can keep fighting within a domain without being overpowered. But that also means that he won't be able to overwhelm Yuji in a brawl with his two extra arms. Which we saw was happening just before the activation of the domain. The geese began flying elsewhere. Sakuna lifted a leg while Yuji raised a fist. Yuji caught Sakuna and used his elbow to brutalize the king's thigh. Sakuna forced him off, causing Yuji to fall over to one side. Sakuna saw this chance and punched down. Yuji managed to guard, but Sakuna wasn't done with him. Yuji was punched in the face and sent several yards away. Sakuna followed behind him as the scenery changed. He crashed down while cackling. He was honestly surprised. Sakuna would have never guessed that Yuji looking down on him would fire him up like this. Being pitied summoned a new level of hate. He planned on punishing all of humanity for what Yuji's done. I have to wonder if Sakuna might have some sort of underlying history with pity. Because Yuji has certainly struck a nerve by just trying to be nice. The scene changes again. Megami is a kid again. He looked up and wondered what was up with Yuji's face. His classmate's voice was shaky. This is all extremely similar to the first time Megami met Gojo. Yuji smiled through tears while admitting how lonely it will be without Megami. This exchange really reminds me of some events from Chainsaw Man. And that was actual perfection. Sukuna staggered as a leg fell into a pool of shadows. He knew that his 10 Shadows technique stopped working after Mahoraga's destruction. So this had to be Megami's. Megami's soul was already submerged. But Yuji's barrage of dismantles have changed things. Now it was Sakuna's turn to get punched in the face. And he received the same treatment he subjected Yuji to. The young sorcerer took in the scene and smiled to himself. Then he resumed his hunt of the strongest creature. Yuji unleashed an unrelenting flurry of blows. Then he leapt back, kicking up heaps of snow in the process. Sakuna's head was held, and he decided to grab hold of Yuji's. They furiously bashed each other's skulls, but Sakuna was the one who was forced to relent. A portion of his simple domain was chipped away. Due to his soul-disrupting hits, 
the effects of Yuji's fists weren't something that he could just heal from with reverse curse technique. It was only a matter of time before Hollow Wicker Basket ends up being destroyed, and he would be totally vulnerable to the domain. Suddenly, Sakuna used his curse technique. The encasement of Yuji's arm was destroyed. He tried to punch, but Sakuna evaded. He managed to recover his burnt out technique. Yuji recognized the move from Gojo. The King of Curses was more than happy to call upon his domain expansion. But Yuji responded with something very unexpected. At the very bottom of an incredibly tall tower was Sakuna's final missing finger. The fact that it's strung up like this has given some fans the impression that it's now or never for Nobara to return. Whatever the case, the next chapter is supposed to be the climax of the arc, so it's bound to be a big one. If you're a Megami fan, I would love to know what you think about him not getting back up. If you are a Yuji fan, I know you're hype. And if you are a Sakuna fan, how long until the king bends the knee? As always, I am Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.